All right, mates, how's it going? So there's quite a lot of lore and history involved for both the Kingdom of Gilneas and the Worgen Curse itself. So in today's video, I'm doing part one of the Worgen starting experience. And this one is focused on the Gilnean human side of things. Part two will be focused on the Worgen side of things. Make sense? Q. Let's go! Led by their indomitable king, Gen Greymane. The proud citizens of Gilneas once stood with the Alliance against the vile, orcish horde that sought to conquer all of Lordaeron. Gilneas survived, but in the chaotic years following the Second War, the mighty kingdom drew ever inward. Distrustful of their former allies, the Gilneans erected a mighty wall at the borders of their land, closing off their nation and their hearts from an ever-darkening world. Now, many years later, as the seemingly unstoppable undead scourge marches across Lordaeron, human civilization once again teeters on the brink of destruction. As war and terror close in all around them, the citizens of Gilneas are faced with one terrible truth. Their mighty wall cannot hold back the dead for much longer. And worse, rumors of a new threat have arisen within the kingdom's borders of feral, nightmare creatures that walk upright as men, but hunt and howl as wolves. I want the perimeter secured! About 2,800 years ago, humans and high elves had a little bit of a war with the Amani Troll Empire. And they won that, obviously. And afterwards, humans decided to spread out from the Kingdom of Strom and expand the Arathi Empire. So a whole bunch of cities were founded. Dalaran, Ultarak, Lordaeron, Stormwind, and Gilneas. And then some Gilneans went even further and founded the island of Kul Tiris as well, about a hundred years later. Over time, these new cities grew and prospered, whilst the Kingdom of Strom's power and control kind of dwindled a little bit. While Strom changed its name to Stromgard for no apparent reason, the other cities eventually grew into kingdoms themselves, and the Arathi Empire split apart. And although the human kingdoms did reunite during the Second War to form the Alliance of Lordaeron, it didn't take long for them to just split apart again. King Gen Greymane of Gilneas had enough of the Alliance's problems and ordered the construction of a huge wall. And the Greymane Wall stood strong and fortified the Kingdom of Gilneas for many years. Unfortunately, it also caused them to have a few problems of their own. Firstly, it created tensions between the King and a nobleman named Lord Darius Crowley. The construction of the wall cut through some of Crowley's land, meaning he was now technically a citizen of Lordaeron, not Gilneas. Plus, he kind of still supported the Alliance and felt like Gen was being a bit of a douche. Secondly, walls don't just keep things out, they also keep things in. But we'll come back to that in part two. Cut to the Third War, the Plague of Undeath had brought the Undead Scourge to the Eastern Kingdoms. Lordaeron sent out requests for help, but Gilneas just went ahead and ignored them. And that was dumb, because Gilneas soon found hordes of the Undead encroaching on their lands as well. But we're just focusing on the human side of things for this video, so the only other thing worth noting for now is the Northgate Rebellion. As I mentioned before, Lord Darius Crowley wasn't a big fan of the King, Gen's refusal to send aid to Lordaeron at the start of the Third War led Crowley to send some of his own men instead. He also committed some of his forces to assist Jaina in her expedition to Kalimdor, and Gen viewed this as treason, so he confronted the nobleman. At which point, Lord Crowley was like, that's it, I'm sick and tired of your shit, Gen. Civil war or something? Fighting erupted across Gilneas between the rebels who were followers of Crowley and the royals, or loyalists, who supported the king. Crowley's forces even managed to smuggle cannons into the city itself, right under the Loyalists' noses. And then the rebel army marched on the capital, using the cannons to set it ablaze. However, they still lost. The Northgate Rebellion just couldn't overcome the Greymane resistance, and the majority of the rebel leaders, including Crowley, were captured and put in Stoneward prison. Rebels that weren't captured went into hiding, and all that was left of the rebellion were a few undiscovered weapon stashes throughout the city. Anyway, our hero today is having possibly the worst day of his life. It started off all right, he had a nice breakfast, but then he looked out the window and saw a bunch of monsters running around, invading the city. He'd heard rumours of these worgen creatures before, but turns out they're bloody real. And now he was going to need to change his pants. And his name's Bigby. Bigby cheese legs. Prince Liam Greymane quickly approached our hero. There's no time to change your pants, Bigby. Speak to Lieutenant Walden. He'll give you further directions for evacuation. Unfortunately, Lieutenant Walden was dead, so that was a waste of time. But Bigby figured the prince would probably want to know about this before he sent anyone else to go report to a dead guy. Where the bloody hell are these things coming from? Oh well, suppose it doesn't matter. It's time to show these beasts what Gilneans are made of. So kill six of them or something. Also, 
Knock on some doors and tell the civilians to cheese it to the prison district. And if you can, grab some salvage supplies from the market as well. So Bigby ran around killing Worgen, knocking doors and grabbing boxes for a bit. And it was glorious. But it was no use. There were just too many Worgens. The prince advised our hero to head to the military district and report to Gwen Armstead. I'll stay here with the guards and cover the civilians' retreat. Get out of here, Bigby. Save yourself. From an RP perspective, it was hard to leave Prince Liam behind, but from a gameplay perspective, he'd only known him a couple of minutes, so he didn't really care. Bigby crossed the bridge and found Gwen, and then our hero found himself speaking to the King of Gilneas himself, Gen Greymane. If we Gilneans stick together, we may well defeat this terrible enemy. Lord Darius Crowley has been called many things. Rebel, traitor, terrorist, dickhead. But before the Civil War, I called him my super awesome best friend. I never really blamed him for his rebellion. It was mostly my fault anyway. Regardless, Crowley is exactly the type of man we need now. Enter Stone Ward Prison and speak to Captain Broderick about his whereabouts. Another bloke called Lord Godfrey approached our hero and was like, no idea why the king wants to risk your life to save a traitor, but what if? Whilst you're at the prison, might as well kill some more worgen. Arriving at the prison, Bigby cut his way through the Bloodfang worgen and found Captain Broderick. He's up on the roof. You want to try and get up there? Be my guest. But I ain't helping. Our hero made his way up the stairs and found Crowley and his men. One of them was severely wounded. Those mangy flea bags got Dempsey real good. We can't move him till we stabilize his bleeding. Give us a hand holding back these jerks in the meantime. For exactly two minutes. So for two minutes, Bigby fought wave after wave of worgen nasties to help some guy called Dempsey that no one really cares about. Cheers, mate. Listen, for the first time since the Civil War, I actually agree with the King. Us Gilneans do need to stick together, because these beasts sure as hell don't care about our politics. Go back to the King. Tell him my men will join his. Also, tell him there's a safe house in Josiah Avery's cellar. We got some heavy artillery stashed there. That's now his as well. See ya. Back to Greymane. That safe house Crawley mentioned, it's just a bit west of here. Gotta be honest, knowing my enemies had artillery inside the city this entire time is actually a bit unnerving, but it might just end up saving us. Find this Josiah Avery person and grab those weapons. Bigby quickly head to the cellar in question. It was fairly easy to find, because the cellar doors were all glowy and stuff, and Josiah Avery was hanging about inside, but he didn't look so well. He was all like, don't look at me, leave me alone. Burr. Our hero then watched in horror as Josiah transformed into a worgen right in front of his eyes. The beast attacked Bigby, biting him and knocking him back. But before things got real ugly, a woman appeared and shot the monster right in the face. He turned into one of them, didn't he? How do we even fight an enemy that can do this to us? I suppose my father's arsenal will be a good start. I'm Lorna Crowley, by the way. Darius' daughter, in case you hadn't figured that out for yourself. We're going to need to move these cannons above ground, but you're going to need to clear the way. But watch out. Some of those worgen up there can use stealth. Take one of my Mastiff Sniffer Dog things with you so you can find them and kill them. So our hero then followed a little bastard Sniffer Dog around for a while, whilst it searched for sneaky invisible worgen. But eventually the way was cleared, and he reported back to Lorna. It's time, Bigby Cheeselegs. We'll take it from here. Tell the King my father's cannons will be at his disposal. There's more than enough firepower here to blow these monsters all the way to the North Sea. Back to Greymane again. He was pleased with the news, but now was not the time for celebrating. Crowley had enough firepower to level this entire district, and it may have to come to that, unfortunately. But we can't open fire until we've rescued a civilian trapped on the other side of the prison. He's not just any civilian, though. Crenon Aranath, a brilliant alchemist. One of his potions saved my daughter Tess from dying soon after being born. Take my horse and rescue him. He must survive. Bigby jumped on the horse and it automatically moved on its own towards the quest objective. And then he just kind of spammed the horse's ability until Crenon was rescued and everything was fine. Upon returning with Crenon, Lord Godfrey advised our hero that it was time to retreat to Greymane Court. Those Worgen jerks will be back in force. Greymane Court is the last place we can hold out without being trapped like fish in a barrel. The king's already there. I guess he walked or something because you had his horse. Our hero crossed another bridge and found the king having a little brain trust meeting with his son and Lord Crowley. The king's plan was to evacuate the survivors to Duskhaven, where they'd be protected by mountains and stuff. And Lord Crowley pointed out that in order for that to be successful, someone would need to keep the Worgen's attention inside the city. Prince Liam volunteered, but everyone told him to shut up. And Darius was like, I'll do it. Get out of here, Gen, you sexy fool. Our hero probably would have quite happily gone with Gen and Liam, but apparently he was also volunteered for this suicide mission. Lord Crowley then advanced the quest line. You don't have to do this, Bigby. But at the same time you do, because there's no other quests. My men have fortified their position inside Light's Dawn Cathedral. You and me are going to jump on this here horse, round up as many of these worgen assholes as we can, and then march them right into the crosshairs of our bloody cannons, mate. So they did that, and it was pretty cool. 
But despite rounding up about 30 of the buggers, he didn't even make a dent. So Bigby had to man a cannon himself and kill another 80 of them. Some guy called Tobias Mistmantle made an inspiring speech. We have the position, we have the firepower. All that remains to be seen is whether we have the courage. And I sure don't see any cowards standing in front of me, except maybe Keith over there. Jesus, Keith, get a hold of yourself. Once again, pretty cool. Cannon fire, loud noises, Morgan flying around all over the place. It was great, but still not enough. Tobias gave the order to retreat. There's too many of them. We're running low on ammo. I guess we didn't have enough firepower. Get inside the cathedral. We'll make our last stand in there. Darius Crowley was waiting inside and gave our hero his final quest as a human being. We've got a good choke point here, but let's be realistic. You might want to say a prayer or something if that's your thing, because we're all going to die. The Morgan Beast smashed through the barricades and started entering the cathedral, and the city's brave defenders gave their all to take out as many of them as possible. But after Bigby killed about eight of them, they stopped coming. Was it possible? Had they survived the onslaught against all odds? Was it finally over? No. So that's the end of part one. In part two, Bigby finds himself in Duskhaven, a little bit hairier than he used to be, and the Gilneans find themselves having to fight against Sylvanas Windrunner and her forsaken forces. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks, and all that's left to say is thanks for watching and see ya!